Yes. I'm ready to film. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just like so lost in this moment of having my life together that I just can't even bear the thought of filming right now. <laughs> okay, today we're going a little bit more vloggy, but also a little, hey, a little self-helpy. We're gonna talk about building better habits because what better way to teach you about those things than someone who never has her life together. And thank you Sleep Number for sponsoring this video. More on them later, but I might've been getting the best sleep of my life the past few months. You know, they might, they might have something to do with it. Facebook, AKA Meta, used to have a motto called move fast and break things when they were in their beginning spurt of becoming the giant they are now today. That's kind of the motto that I had in my first uh, what well seven years of a I guess professional YouTube career here's the thing I was not afraid to break things if I can just make more videos do more jobs travel if an inconvenience would take time away from me but I could pay a dollar amount to get rid of that well that's what I would do I was moving fast and breaking things because I was like well if I can do another job and have fun and make videos over here why do I need to worry about that $200 a month insurance charge that's going every month that I have to call them to cancel and blah 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 and so recently for like an entire month I got severely ill so when I said I was sick right here, um, it was actually me being pregnant and throwing up every day and it just was not a good time. If you're like, what, Sarah, you're pregnant, you can watch the video I posted yesterday. Um, and if you don't care about that, um, well, Jeannie's here to have in Texas for Thanksgiving. We're gonna give Jeannie the camera. Let's see if, let's see if they can tell. Okay. Hold on, whoa. What? You just went vertical, girl, it's a YouTube video. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Balm. You feel like I have to. Is it there? It's there. So, little baby. So, this is why I also had motivation to get my life together. So, it actually works out that I'm now posting this video after that. So, you can kind of know more of my reasoning. Okay, back to the video. And I couldn't do a lot of work, and I started envisioning a life where honestly I do less, which means less money. And after I watched several seasons of network, cheesy government TV, I said to myself, oh, it might be time to catch up on seven years of not having my life together. And if I can, I actually wanna share a few of those things with you because I have this getting my life together notes. And as you can see, there's some check marks. And so, hey, yeah, this is gonna be a fun hangout vlog, but at the same time, maybe I can inspire you guys to maybe do the same but also i need to inspire myself because as you can see i only have like half of these checked off and if i don't make this into a video i will not finish this list good zooming i went the wrong way you went right. okay are you ready for this there we go check this out check this out okay i waited on hold for hours to cancel a 99 dollars a month subscription to credit glory notion ai i've been paying it for my whole entire space with all my team members none of them use it my all-state health insurance from texas did you know that that was going on for this entire time six months we've been in la nope and if you're ready for this this is my version of girl math that i've been doing i was obsessed with a new sony lens that came out i made a video on it it was the new sony wide lens old sarah oh instant buy guess what i did i did not buy it <laughs> because i realized i have this lens which is fine it's not as fancy but it kind of does the same job 2100 saved i feel great about that when we were in colorado recently what happened <laughs> no idea <laughs> we were there for like 10 days what do you mean our freaking rental car Oh. apparently got hit by hail, which we don't recall at all. It didn't, it actually did it not happen. It didn't, so I think we got kind of fudged, but we were stuck with the bill. That type of admin stuff, I hate. It is the bane of my existence. What would old Sarah do? You would cry and ignore it forever. Old Sarah would be anxious about it, mm. and she would get to the point where she just pays it. It was $1,400, guess what new Sarah did? You proved them wrong. <laughs> she did all of the paperwork, all of the phone calls, and the insurance actually came through after it was like a month or ordeal. But there you go, there's some more girl math. $1,400 added. So do you feel like I'm getting my life together, Jen? Yeah, I'm proud of you. Yeah, it just, but see, here's the thing. It took me not doing anything for a month, and now a little bit of life has come back, and I gotta finish this list. So I'm hoping me making this video will help me with that. Yeah, it, it does feel like an exchange though. Like, well, you I'm slow scared. down, you're able to fix this stuff, but if you speed back up... I know. I don't know. You gotta choose. No, it really is binary for me. Yeah. That's what's so funny about it and sad about it. <laughs> now we're depressed. I haven't showed you 
a ton of the house that we're renting right now because, well, it's just kind of been a mess. I can only go kind of one room by one room. First, it was the office and the living room, our little dining area. Um, but the two rooms that I'm most focused on now is this kind of like formal living over here and our once dining room that is going to be the office. As you can see, it's a complete mess right now. But I went on Fiverr for some inspiration. I always do this with spaces and I paid a designer to give me some inspo. So these photos are the North Star. I'm not gonna get them perfectly. I'm about halfway there, but I want to get to like 90%. You like our new ottoman? Okay, I gotta flip this over. I don't think he cares. Judy is very passionate when we have things to unbox. Look, it's a new pillow! So I tried to get throw pillows that matched the render. Um, the only bummer about having professional designers design a space is a lot of times they just go for the best looking furniture and pillows and all the things. And oftentimes you're like, okay, well, where do I buy that? So it's definitely still more of a North Star. You can't copycat it. So I just bought a few pillows and we'll see if we have to return this one. I think I'll like this one though. Pillow reveal. So this is actually very similar to the one in the render. Look at this kitty. Does it pass the sniff test? Large L desk, someone is picking up right now. This has filled up a large part of our small entrance area here. So this is good that this is being sold. New cards, new deck, new life. King of Cups, he comes up right. Okay, this doesn't look like a lot, but two big boxes of tech that are now inside other boxes has caused me so much stress. And it feels so good to just have this ready to be dropped off at FedEx. So many tech loans of companies the past year just being like, Sarah, where's where's that laptop? Or where's that phone that we let you borrow? So I have an idea on how deep I am into doing things that I have been putting off. This is a brand new GoPro Hero 9 that Dan from What's Inside bought in New York and accidentally left in my studio after a podcast in 2021. Never sent it back to him, but I kept it. I'm literally sending it back now, two years later. Who knows if he still wants this, Dan, I'm sorry. Searching for like the exact dimensions, like it looks stupid, doesn't it? Because <laughs> they're wearing a hat. Been at it already, had my tarot red. Things are looking up for me, that's what my tarot say. Been pumping out pheromones and wearing red. Young Jerry Lollery King, but they're not aware of it. And while speaking of getting our physical spaces organized, one amazing addition to our bedroom is a new sleep number smart bed. And guys, it's nice. It's very nice. I would like to tell you about it. Thank you, Sleep Number, for sponsoring this video. Okay, so in this video, we're talking about, hey, getting a little bit more organized. Sleep is very important. And this guy right here has made a huge impact on my sleep. This is a Sleep Number Climate 360 Smart Bed. Thank you so much, Sleep Number, for sponsoring this video. I just wanna tell you all about this bed because, woo, it's nice. It's helped me with my sleep a lot. There is so much tech packed inside this bed. It has the Flex Fit Smart Base. This allows you to have full control over raising the head or even raising your feet. And we got the version that's split at the top. So I can do this independent of John if he wants to stay flat, but I wanna be positioned up to watch TV or read a book, no problem. Also on each of our sides, we have independent climate control. So this is one of the coolest features about the Climate 360 is it actually has active cooling and heating as well as foot warming. Feels like I have my own little spa here. 
It, it makes going to sleep a lot of fun. And the coolest smart bed feature that is included in all of the sleep number beds is their sleep IQ app. This is how you control your bed. So all sleep number beds have the sleep number. This controls the firmness. So you can go from zero, 10, 20, that makes your side of the bed softer, all the way up to 80, 90, 100, which are the firmer settings. So mine kind of fluctuates in between 45 to 65, if you're wondering. And this is where you can control all of the things. But if you go over here and look at the sleep IQ data, this is where it just gets really interesting. You get a sleep IQ score every morning that you wake up. I'm not the biggest smartwatch fan. I just like can't keep it on my wrist and keep it charged and working. I, I don't like it. So having something that I don't have to worry about, I just get in the bed and it gives me all these really cool insights. Uh, it's just really cool because I, I don't even have to think about it. So as you can see here, here is the first week of my sleep IQ. IQ insights and I have already improved. Look at those scores in the 80s. I even have some in the 90s. Now, if we go to my sleep session score, um, this is where you can really get into the details, right? Now, don't judge. I was still going to bed at 2, 3 a.m., okay? But my duration of sleep, the fact that my average sleep was eight and a half hours. That is very good for me. So having this mattress has just made it so much easier to improve my sleep habits, which I, I needed some help with. If you guys wanna check out Sleep Number, they have so many different options um, depending on what your budget is. I will leave my link in the description below if you wanna check them out. And Sleep Number, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. And they're not just sponsoring this video, but I actually made a whole series for them over on their YouTube channel. So there's four episodes, and if you want to learn even more, you can check those out again in the description below. Okay, back to the video. Well, we are finally done. Things are organized, packages are shipped off, and the front two rooms that have been neglected since we moved in are finally done. Using this room as a dining room just ended up as a place we would just plop a lot of junk on and we would never actually sit there and eat. But also what didn't work was putting our oversized desks here and never really landing on any storage. So I'm glad that the Fiverr renders helped with a better layout and well, I'm really satisfied with the way it came out. So moving on to the next room, um, we actually used to have our big desks right in this front room and it didn't look good, it didn't flow. And so I am very glad that it's just a living room again. It feels right, we added more storage and we didn't overcrowd it with a ton of furniture to accommodate well the inevitable constant stream of packages. There are still a few things missing like side tables next to the couch, um, but it just feels so much nicer to finally have a fully preserved presentable house. Having the front two rooms done with good feng shui matches the vibe of the rest of the house. It just, it feels good. Big accomplishment for me. It's now like, like dark outside. I've been sitting here for five hours, just chugging through the list doing all the things. It's amazing what I can do when I just go. Okay, honestly guys, I'm feeling accomplished, but what's been happening also behind the scenes is a lot of digital organization. Now, it's not a ton of fun to watch me organize iPhone photos, transfer the content of SSDs to my NAS, or cancel more subscriptions, but just know we are getting things done. So one part that actually might be helpful is how I organize all of my videos and photos with my NAS. So that's what we're going to dive into now. What I've been doing for the past two days is offloading everything on my PC to the NAS, making sure all of my NAS is backed up to my second NAS because I'm actually getting rid of this PC that I've used for the past three or four years, which is crazy, it's done me well, but it's starting to slow down on some of my workflows and it takes up a lot of room. So I think it's just towards the end of its life, but if you have a computer for four years, you know, you're gonna have junk on it. So it took longer than I thought, always does, but the interesting part that I think will actually help you is a new way that I'm organizing my photos because even if you don't have a NAS, I think some of the principles will help you get organized with photos, but more importantly, the whole point of taking photos and documenting life is to make sure they're curated enough that you can actually go back and enjoy looking at memories and it's not such a chore. A lot of us, I think, put a lot of our photos with the raw files and the J 
JPEGs and maybe we don't really edit them the way we want them. And then they just end up in a folder that we never look at again, right? And so that is actually a big thing that I wanted to solve this year. And it's not perfect yet, but I'm starting. And so I kind of want to show you that organization. Also reason number two why I'm doing it like this is back in the day, I used to have all of my photos from life in iPhoto. That was before Apple Photos. And the way a lot of photo apps work is it packages all the content up in its own unique way. And it's probably like four or five years ago, I had successfully transferred uh, iPhoto apps with all the content still alive from computer to computer and it was fine. Something happened. It was around the time that they transitioned to the Photos app. My entire iPhoto library got corrupted. There was literally nothing I could do. I paid for apps that said, oh, uh, do this and it'll help you recover all of your photos. And even though the iPhoto library wasn't all of my photos, it was like a lot of really good stuff from high school, um, from my childhood that I had shot on my like crappy, you know, cell phones. And they were like very meaningful photos for me. And the only place that they were, were stuck in that iPhoto app. And so to this day, I will never do that again. That's why I keep all of my photos just organized in normal files on my computer. And then I back those up to a backup NAS, but that's not the best way to then find photos and view them after the fact. Uh, to just double click on folders and preview on your computer. And so that is where I found Synology Photos. This is a super helpful app on my NAS that essentially just lives on top of your photos files. So I'll, I'll show you what I have going on. Okay, most of you guys know that a NAS is a network attached storage. So it's on my network. So any computer that has access to my network can see what is on my NAS. And let's see, we have 48 terabytes on it of 71 terabytes. And this right here, what I have pulled up is basically the operating system of your NAS. You have your own little apps, you have File Station, which shows you um, all the, the you know different files that you have. And as you'll see, I also have the NAS mounted uh, to my computer in Finder. So I can see all of those same folders um, right here in Finder. So pretty much all of my files are stored in my home. Now this definitely isn't a best practice. I already started creating other folders outside of that that is more shareable to like freelancers that I work with because home, you're not going to be like sharing those folders to other people. And so for those files, I created new shared folders like this. Um, I kind of just started that workflow, but we'll focus on this for the most part. Uh, when it comes to editing with my remote editor, we just use G Drive and that as well is just synced to this computer. However, this is using Google Drive's um, drive app. And I not only see the files that are also in my G drive, but the little green check marks signify they're actually downloaded onto my computer as well. Um, so, you know, my editor and I can edit off of the same folder. So things don't get reconnected and we just kind of like export our resolve files here, which isn't the most clean way. This is the way that like premiere editors would do it. Um, but it's worked for us. But now that resolve has revamped their cloud editing, uh, we actually don't have to do this. So I probably won't do this for much longer. Okay, going back to the NAS, focus. We gotta talk about the pictures. That's the whole point of why I wanted to talk about this. But yeah, my general file structure isn't that exciting. We just have like all of my videos, any documents that are specific to that year, I'll put in that folder. But more general documents like taxes or things that range over multiple years, I have like a more general folder for that. You know, I got a ton of files dating all the way back to uh, 2009, oh, we have Final Cut projects. Good times, good times. Ah, uh, rest in peace. See, this is the iPhoto library that's just like completely corrupted, I think. One day, I'll figure out how to restore that. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. I haven't gotten this prompt before, so maybe it's not corrupted. It's just deprecated. Okay, but see, this is the reason why you want to choose a photos workflow that is going to work throughout the years, no matter what happens to the app that you're using to viewing the photos. Okay, so my photo organization before would be to just dump all of my iPhone content into these folders over here. And if I needed to reference something, I would literally just via the random files in this folder. Okay, you're seeing the problem with this method because it takes forever to load because there's probably like 5,000 photos in here, right? But all of the raw data is in here, but that's not conducive to actually going back and finding things. And then the photos that I take with my actual cameras, like non-iPhone photos, are basically just 
buried in these different year folders and then pics folders and then folders on top of folders. So, you know, South Korea film photos. Oh, that is something that I would probably want to go back and actually look at more, more often than not. But I never do because it's just buried in folders. See, if I want to click on it, I can go through like this, reminiscing. Oh, that was such a cool trip. Anyways, I'm getting distracted by photos. Okay, so I think there's two camps. People either organize their photos like this, you never see them, or they just put them in an iPhoto, which is now photos, and that works for them. But that's either going to require you to use the storage on your computer or iCloud, and that is just so limited to me that does not work. So that's why I have a NAS solution. So this is what I've been doing. If we go over here to this photo folder, this is a built-in folder that comes with all Synology NASs. And basically what I have done is I have gone, uh, I've done it just for three years, but I've gone over to these 2023, 20, 22, 21 folders, clicked on the photos folder. And if we click on one of these, the only photos that I have left on here are the raw files. I'm probably never gonna need those again, but just in case I keep them here. I'm a maximalist when it comes to data, okay? I, I keep everything. But when it comes to the pretty edited JPEGs that I want to view, um, they're no longer here, but I have copied them over into this photos folder that's connected to Synology Photos, which just comes with every Synology NAS that I'm using to view the photos, which I'll show you. But so this is what the 2022 folder in just this photos folder looks like. This is just straight up all of the JPEG edits that I wanna see. So this is like Christmas photos that I've taken, just life stuff that I wanna reference, right? Got all of our wedding photos, family pics. And so I've gone through and started to do this organizing, um, but I'm gonna do this for every single year. And then I also stuck all of my iPhone media here. And so I'm gonna show you what this looks like now. So here is Synology Photos. It's just gonna launch the app and Boom, let's go to the folder. So as you can see, this is just a application that's sitting on top of the raw files that I have here. So they will forever be these files. They're not like zipped up into an iPhotos app, right? Where you have to worry about compatibility in five years or whatever. But Synology Photos basically just sits on top and you can click through all of the photos. It keeps the folders, right? But this is what I've been missing is this timeline view. And so really it just looks like any normal iPhoto or photos app, but it just lives on top of your NAS. And it's a much more like sustainable, scalable way for me to just like, oh, hey, that photo back in, uh, you know, there's dates over here, uh, 2020 or 2019, and you can go back to 2019. And what's so cool about it is my good photos are also mixed in with all of my iPhone content, which I actually like. And so here's some good photos that we shot in LA. Awesome. Here's some family photos. Oh, look at Judy. This was during Christmas time. Here's wedding photos and Patty. And so all of this is organized by date based on the metadata of the photos. And as you can see now, we're mixing in, you know, my iPhone content with also my good photos from um, my camera. You can go in here and say, hey, I only want photos. I don't want videos. Um, and it does that pretty quick. And so, yeah, this is just a great way for me to get like a full snapshot of life reminisce, try to find a certain photo that I was looking for. And I think step two of this organization, once I get all of these photos that are buried in my uh, home folders and I put them in this photo folder, after I do this, I'm gonna then go through all of my iPhone media um, and I think I can just do it here in this timeline view. And I'm gonna get rid of all the duplicates, all of the screenshots. Like why, why do I need all of these screenshots, right? I don't need them. Let's see if I can just do it from here. Delete. Boom. And so this is just gonna be a clean way to view photos that I want to see. Uh, and so now that this is my workflow, I'm just gonna download one of those iPhoto organization apps on my iPhone and make sure like all screenshots are deleted, duplicates are deleted before they even get onto the NAS so I can skip that step of, you know, going literally year by year here and deleting screenshots and deleting, <laughs> deleting stuff I don't need because like, 
so many iPhone photos are just trash, you know? Like, do I need these beautiful pictures of John Hill right here? Probably not. But these pictures, those are nice. So we'll keep those. Okay, I hope that helps. Regardless if you have a Synology NAS, hopefully the way of how I'm thinking about this helps and you can find your own apps. I just never liked the idea of storing all of my photos on, you know, my computer storage, because, well, that's impossible, or buying, you know, terabytes and terabytes of monthly storage from iCloud. I, it's just not like super sustainable. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed all of the Judy content, all of the organizational inspo. Hopefully it encourages you to get out there and maybe cancel that subscription that you've been not using for a year. I was really starting to get my life together, but I needed to make this video to really cross the finish line. So thank you guys. Thank you for the encouragement and thank you for being there. One last shout out to Sleep Number for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much. Please check out the links in the description below to learn more. And until next time, everyone, stay peachy. Okay, 